thinking about putting it back into the system. Sometimes because there's a lack of trust in the system, but we should be putting in that money. There is no question at all about it. The other thing there is, and again he's, he's made the point about the, the higher net worth individuals. A lot of people in Nigeria should be paying a lot, in fact they should be paying tax. Let's not even say a lot of tax. They should be paying tax in the first place. In countries like South America, uh, South Africa, in the US, in the UK, the top 10, 5% of the population pay 80% of the tax. So we need to get the engagement of those at the top of the hierarchy to start to pay the tax to show the example. We also need to have a greater, we spoke about capacity in the previous session, we have a need for greater capacity at all the levels of government because the average person's view of the tax man is not Tunde and FIRS who are very, very professional in their approach and deal with the upper echelon. It's the local government collector. And so we need to work all the way through because once you have given money to one arm of government, even for a service you're enjoying, like you want a receipt for something you're paying for, water, power, they still say it's tax. That's not a tax, that's a charge for a service you're getting. And some of the moves to pay as you go will drive us, through the same way it went for telecoms, will drive us to start to understand the difference between the taxes you pay which are compulsory and you don't and, and decide where they're going to, and the charges that you pay on the other side, not all payments to government and tax. So in the UK, you get something for something.
from the beginning. All the income that the elites, elites in the parliament, state, federal, elite, economically, what they are earning, we can easily get them. Technology has assisted us so much, yes. but we know that we are not getting there. So the, the taxpayers in Nigeria feel agreed. What I mean, the, the, the taxpayer I'm talking is the generality of the taxpayer. And it's very difficult for the tax authority preaching. I sympathize with them when they talk and they preach like this one. They are preaching to the wrong audience. But don't you think it's true? We should pay that kind of contribution at this level.
so that you have a lot of one medium scale industry that will not pay these taxes. And these small and medium scale industries will also employ individuals who also pay income tax. Let me tell you one thing I observed in New York. I just came back from New York in August. I was in New York. The New York mayor was wooing so many industries in Pennsylvania to come over to New York and situate their industries. What's he trying to achieve? Say, if you come over, we'll give you tax break for five years. Just come and build the industry and you'll pay tax for five years. So when those people come over and build their industries in New York, it is discovered that they employ a lot of people. Those people pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time the five years is over, they have expanded. You have more taxes to collect. Mm -hmm. So we begin, have to begin to think and think and think on how we can move Africa forward. Thank you very much.
empires and kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And they had their traditional caste system. And then, in a traditional African setting, it was, you were more like an outcast if you are uh, perceived or regarded not to have paid your tax obligation because they believe that there are certain obligations that you as a citizen both state. So the underlying principle of transition is that it is a social contract between the citizens and the state. Uh, to create a fair and balanced system, the honor lies on the taxpayer being able to discharge its obligation and also on the other hand for the state to judiciously use taxpayers' money in a manner that is transparent and accountable. Exactly. So when you talk about taxes, uh, I think a lot of times we tend to just see from the perspective of what is in the developed society. But if we bring it down to our own environment, we find out that we are not able to create a balanced and fair tax administration system because we learn that discipline and the attitude to keep certain policies and laws that are in Nigeria today, we come up with a lot of statistics. It's easier for us to say we are over 200 million Nigerians. And when you look at the figures still rolled out by IMF or the World Bank, out of the 200 million Nigerians, it's easily it said that about 80 million of those Nigerians are economically viable individuals. They have one form of economic activity that they are doing. But look at the tax system. Today, in all of this that is being said, the number of individuals and corporate entities that are currently registered on our tax system is under 25 million. So, what of the rest? So, the burden of having a fair and balanced transition system must start from our ability to be able to identify who are potential taxpayers that should come to the task If you look at our task laws, we have various task laws that are in place, but how many of these laws are actually translated to implementation and efficient use of task administration system? Um, one that we rather advocate that it's better for us to have a manageable set of laws, task laws, that we can easily communicate to the ordinary Nigeria. And then have a system that clearly identifies everybody's system, and then have a fair share of the task burden to all those that have the ability and the capacity to be able to pay. The chair just read out statistics that there are a number of corporate accounts that are running turnovers a bank over a billion. And when you come to check, close to 50, if not 50 percent of these corporate accounts are not in the tax net. They've never paid taxes. They have the capacity, they have the ability, but they are not in the tax net. Uh, I tend to also disagree with uh, my boss, the Nayedu, that the tax authorities are not able to raise this. I know recently, the chair of the Federal Island Revenue came up with the uh, account substitution. Those who were hidden, we never knew. And I, I ran some of my friends came to me, oh, I have, we never knew you had such an uh, account. And yeah, immediately a year was placed on it. They came out. So first is first of all, to have a clarity of what you want to do, and also have the courage to do it. I believe what the Federal Island Revenue is doing is to ensure that we have an equitable, fair, and balanced that system that shares to ensure that those who have the ability and capacity to pay are brought into the tax net and reduce the burden that is be put on the ordinary poor Nigerians or the small and medium enterprises that you can find that they are not able to have enough capital to be able to run their business. One of the biggest challenge that we have is that with the habit of uh, information communication technology, the world has become a global village. And what that means to the task administration is that we must need to think of big data. We need a lot of information data to be able to put a system that is 
fair, a system that is transparent, a system that is accountable. Today we have volumes of transactions that are going on in the various financial institutions, exchange of goods and services. But relate this to the taxes that are being collected. Nigeria is said to have the highest GDP, biggest economic in, in Africa. But what is our tax revenue or our GDP? It's the lowest. Which tells you clearly that there are those that are benefiting from the system without making a contribution for the good of the society. And I believe until we put a system in place that is inclusive, that is efficient, that is transparent and accountable, we're now going to be able to have a balanced and fair transition. Thank you. Thank you so much. touched on the problem of the untouchable taxpayer. What do you expect from the tax authority? Because the untouchable taxpayer issue is not only in Nigeria, it cuts across different locations. What would you expect African tax authorities to do around the untouchable taxpayer that they are not doing? Thank you so much. It is uh, a problem not peculiar to there is an apparent unfairness in the sharing of the tax body in Africa, particularly the, we are developing economy. Some countries are coming out now out of Africa. Ghana, I think my colleague here have mentioned. You see, if you look at the tax structure, and you can see that the Few who live a style of life you can see, and you can see their income apparent, and they are not sharing in this tax body, and you keep on hammering on the low and the middle one, and all these methods we are using, they are good to so the people who are initiating and using them, but the clamor from the TV taxpayer shows that we are in a crisis. We are in a crisis in Africa because those elites, which they are, they are few and we can see them, we can know them. If they, we are able to capture their data in a formal way, it is not, you see, technology has been the or to be able to capture information. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the properties in Abuja, you just go to Riji. It's a very simple matter. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the people who are in the National Assembly, senators and the other one, local government, uh, state and other, the data are readily available. And because of technology, you can match income. Whether you are taking dividends, whether you are taking rent, whatever you are taking. The technology and media, that is what the advanced world are doing. And I think Ghana very close to us. From what they announced and they broke out, they have now realized that you should do taxation through production, grow the production. If the production is grown, and that's what uh, the man I quoted earlier on the other thing. You see, in his book on the, the Word of nation. He said, if you don't grow production, whereby the goods and services are many, your gross national uh, product will not be buoyant. And if they are not buoyant and the wealth is not created, how will you get that? There's no amount. You will not be killing, killing, and killing. If you want, the one or two have it, they are not taught. And they are wasting the asset. They are wasting the way. To me, they are wasting it. That's why it is, the taxes we are collecting, I'm not talking of FRS alone. The whole, located in the Secretary of the Joint Task Board is here. Now that I see very well I go around the country, I feel very, very bad that we are not really touching the people we should touch. And the people we should touch are those who have the money. So you ask me of my suggestion. My suggestion is a very few. Tax structure, a basket of this of, of tax. 
you have to diversify to make sure everybody share in the portfolio. You must create a horizontal equity faith. That is, people of the same time, they pay the same tax. If you are in the caliber of billion, your taxes must be in billion. If you are in the caliber of trillion, your taxes must be in trillion. Now, while you create vertical equity, you must create a what we call a thinking about putting it back into the system. Sometimes because there's a lack of trust in the system, but we should be putting in that much. There is no question at all about it. The other thing there is, and again he's, he's made the point about the, the higher net worth individuals. A lot of people in Nigeria should be paying a lot, in fact they should be paying tax. Let's not even say a lot of tax. They should be paying tax in the first place. In countries like South America, South Africa, in the US, in the UK, the top 10, 5% of the population pay 80% of the tax. So we need to get the engagement of those at the top of the hierarchy to start to pay their tax to show the example. We also need to have a greater, we spoke about capacity in the previous session, we have a need for greater capacity at all the levels of government because the average person's view of the tax man is not today at FIRS who are very, very professional in their approach and deal with the upper echelon, is the local government collector. And so we need to work all the way through because once you have given money to one arm of government, even for a service you're enjoying, like you want a receipt for something you're paying for, water, power, they still say it's tax. That's not a tax, that's a charge for a service you're getting. And some of the moves to pay as you go will drive us through the same way it went for telecoms, will drive us to start to understand the difference between the taxes you pay which are compulsory and you don't and, and decide where they're going to, and the charges that you pay on the other side, not all payments to government and tax. So in the UK, you get something for something. As a former tax administrator and general corporation, what do you think is not being done from a Pan African tax administration point of view around the convention issues? Thank you so much. Sharing of the burden of taxation 
their needs exposed, call them political elites, but they are in, 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 in an untouchable uh, uh, level. And unfortunately, a lot of the tax authority, they can only move to the peripheral. They, can, they don't reach them. They can't reach them. Because budgets are given out. One of the things that you can you should be able to ascertain what should be paid from the beginning. All the income that the elites, elites in the parliament, state, federal, elite, economically, what they are earning, we can easily get them. Technology has assisted us so much. Yes. But we know that we are not getting there. So the, the taxpayers in Nigeria feel agreed. When I read it, the, the taxpayer I'm talking is the generality of the taxpayer. And it's very difficult for the tax authority preaching. I sympathize with them when they talk and they preach like this one. They are preaching to the wrong audience. But when we think it's true, we should pay that kind of contribution at this level.
And um, I want to add something that the CIT is also expecting the government to improve their infrastructure and also find a way to promote the, the growth of small and medium scale industries. We are do you pay tax? Do you pay tax if you don't have an income? You don't pay tax if you don't have an income. You can only pay tax when you have what? Income. I think African leaders should concentrate more on improving and growing small medium scale industries in Africa. So that you have a lot of small medium scale industries that will not pay these taxes. <laughs> and these small and medium scale industries will also employ individuals who also pay income tax. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing I observed in New York. I just came back from New York in August. I was in New York. The New York mayor was wooing so many industries in Pennsylvania to come over to New York and situate their industries. What's it like that? He said, if you come over, we'll give you tax break for five years. Just come and build the industry and you'll pay tax for five years. So when those people come over and build their industries in New York, we discover that they employ a lot of people. Those people pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time the five years is over, they have expanded. You have more taxes to collect. Mm -hmm. So we begin, have to begin to think and think and think on how we can move Africa forward. Thank you very much.
uh, that we want. I am not sure we have uh, time for questions. We take some questions. Yes, we take some questions. Okay. Okay, let me just take one question. No. Please, can you pass the mic to that gentleman? Thank you very much. My name is Ifan Igwe. I'm a proprietor of uh, Old Hill Academy from Lagos State. Uh, Mr. Chairman, well said about the tax collection. But um, I, I, um, our panelists have actually spoke well in respect to infrastructure. I wouldn't know how you would tell a man staying in Okwela to pay you tax because that road is terrible, it's a dead trap. It has said much about that, and I hope that government will say about it. Now, my question is this. There are a lot of uh, unstructured tax systems that are existing. For example, in Lagos, every post stop, every corner you collect money from people. And this is indirectly impacting on the citizen. So this unstructured system, what can the FRS do to ensure that these people are also in the government or are paying the government net already? So let's begin this start my question, sir. Okay. My question is, over the years we've been collecting tax mostly from the formal sector. All the discussion we've had now has centered mostly around formal sector, civil servant, people that operate bank account and so on. We know there are rich businessmen, I come from the north. In Kano you have a man that has a billion dollar in the house. He doesn't have a bank account. Mm -hmm. What can we do to be able to reach out to the informal sector in terms of tax collection? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Abani, you want to take that last question before my chair takes the question. On the last question about the informal sector, you are, you are absolutely right. Anybody who can drive one Dakota size truck of rights has got the best part of a million naira profit sitting on that truck there and there. Mm -hmm. There is a program set up, there's a, a presumptive tax regime which deals with people at the lower level of the informal sector and it uh, points directly to what uh, uh, Dr. Naiju was saying about people in different banks paying more or less the same amounts of money. But the bulk of the money in this country is sitting at the sub-national level. FIRS does not collect personal income tax except for a few people uh, at the federal level, uh, uh, expatriates and so on. The real personal income tax is at state level. And we need to help build the state level capacity to also understand and introduce these concepts of taking out the correct amount of money from the correct person. Mm -hmm. At the moment, all they do is extract from the lowest people. When I drive into my farm, I cry. Because what you have are checkpoints taking money off for Kada riders. And when you drive past with your GPs, yes sir, thank you sir. So that is the inequality and unfairness we are talking about. We need to help the states build the capacity to drive these things. But the principles are exactly what we have said. Higher net worth value people need to pay more. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think the doctor has answered most of my questions. Um, a lot of these people that ask me to make a payment, they are not paying taxes. It's either you belong to a group, maybe a Okada Riders Association, and every month or every other day they stop you on the road to give you permission to ride your Okada and make a payment. That's not the tax. The taxes are what you pay based on your income, employment, or profit as a corporate organization. Now, we also mentioned that by the Constitution, the states, governments, and other governments have the constitutional right to collect taxes and levies. Now, under the Joint Tax Board, we try and make sure that they do it properly and that they harmonize tax collection. But legally, by the Constitution, we cannot force them to follow our recommendations. Now, secondly, is that people have the idea that we do not tax the high net worth, uh, like 
my big brother here said, we do have, actually have information for all corporate properties owned across Nigeria. We've done it for Abuja, for example. We had about 2,000 properties under corporate dates that had not paid taxes. That group has paid us over 4 billion. Uh, 134 of those properties, the corporate organization claimed not to own them, and those properties have been taken over by the federal government. And that's an exercise that will do across the nation. So please note that the rich also have started to pay taxes in Nigeria. From what I'm hearing, evading tax payments will no longer be attractive. That is the system that now builds in Africa that we want. And on this note, I want to thank all my eminent panelists for their contributions since the past one hour. While I invite Nancy uh, to come forward, thank you. Thank you very much. We will take the group photograph with Nancy and have the honor of uh, presenting the so many. Huh? You may have an opportunity for a dinner tonight, but you have to show your tax clearance. <laughs> We want to thank our partners, Cass Springs. Thank you very much. Congratulations. 
immediately after this we 